Hello, great kids. Welcome to another lesson on quantitative reasoning. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at test number 11. Test number 11. In test number 11, we are going to be looking at four examples. In example 1, We'll make use of addition, we'll make use of subtraction, we'll use multiplication and also division. Now let's see the picture. Uh, in the picture we have an arrow pointing downward and one pointing upward. The one pointing downward actually represents the symbol of multiplication right multiplication why the one pointing downwards represent the symbol of addition addition so let's take an example if we have a two and an arrow pointing upward right so that is to say two arrow pointing upward four what are we going to get from this well obviously it is going to be a plus that is two plus four that will give us six six Let's take another example. For example, if we have a 5 and an arrow pointing downwards and another number 3. So we are going to have 5 an arrow pointing downwards 3. That will give us 5 multiplied by 3. That's times so we have 5 times 3 that gives us 15 15 all right so this is how we make use of this particular example let's look at example number two in this second example we'll use addition we will also use a subtraction we will use a square of numbers and then we will use square root now let's look at the picture we have a 25 a 10 and 15 and a 5 so to get the 25 is obvious we have to add up the numbers on top in other words we're saying 10 plus 15 that is 1 and 5 so 10 plus 15 of course the answer is 25 25 all right so this is how we get the 25 so if we wish to get the 15 we are going to do the opposite of addition which is subtraction so we're going to subtract the 10 from the 25 so we subtract the number in the 10 position from the number in the 25 position so that's 25 minus 10. Of course, the answer to this question is 15. 25 minus 10, 15. All right. Note that we have a 5 also in this diagram. We can as well find the square root of 25 to get 5. Yes. We can find the square root of 25 to get 5. Alright? So, in other words, we can just say the square root of 25 is the square root of 5 times 5. The square root of 5 times 5, which is what? 5. Alright, so this is how we deal with this 
example number two. Now let's move to the next example, number three. In example number three, we are going to do what we call indices, roots, and multiplication. Indices is also par. Roots is like the square root and then multiplication. Now let's look at the diagram. On the left side, you, you have 5 over 4. And on the right hand side also, you have 5 over 4. Now the number on top, on the right hand side, is connected to the one on the left hand side. So also is the number below on the left hand side to the number below on the right hand side. And the number at the middle is 1. Shows that the number on both sides will be equal because the power of 1 does not change. Next, let's look at this other picture where we have 4 over 9 on the left side and 2 over 3 on the right side. Again, we connect them the same way. The number at the middle is 2. It means the power of those on the right should be 2 to give us the ones on the left. For example, 2 to the power of 2. And when I say power of 2, I'm talking about the number at the middle, the 2. Alright, so now we have 2 raised to the power of 2 equal to 2 times 2. And when we multiply this, we are going to get 4. And so this is how we got the 4 on the top. Now, we can also decide to make use of the 4 to get the number at the middle which is the 2, the index 2. So we have, let that index be unknown. Uh, so we have x, 2 raised to the power of x equal to the number on the left, which is 4. Now, when we break down the 4 in a product form, we will have 2 times 2. And so that gives us 2 raised to the power of 2. When we compare the left and the right side, we will discover that x is the same thing as 2. So that means to get the power of 2, we must do the following. Now, the same thing with 3 on the right hand side. We try to make use of x to represent this unknown number 3. Again, we say let it be raised to 2, which is at the middle, equal to 9, which is on the left hand side. So what do we do next? We try to break the 9 down into two parts in a product form. And that gives us 3 multiplied by 3. So this is the same thing as 3 raised to the power of 2. So when you compare the left and the right side, you discover that the x represents 3. Alright? So x is 3. This is how we get the number on the right hand side now let's look at the final one which is the example number four the five and the n are connected by multiplication however the n shows that there are two numbers here multiplying each other one is one less than the other that is five and a four five and four for this second picture, the same thing for the 6 and the n is going to be two numbers involved, a 6 and a 5. Then we multiply it by the 3. Now let's deal with the 5n first. Now 5n represents 5 and 4 because 4 is 5 minus 1. So we have 5 equal to 5 times four right so what do we get five times four is simply equal to twenty twenty all right five times four is twenty all right let's look at um the second picture where we have six n three Again, the 6n will start with the 6n. The 6n represents two numbers. 
6 and a 5. Well, the 5 means minus 1 times 5. The result of this multiplication is 30. All right, 30. However, recall that after the 6 end, there is a 3. Okay, that means we are going to multiply this result by 3. So 30 times 3 will give us 90. 90. So this is how we do or solve this uh, problem. This is all we are going to take in this uh, video. I hope you had a wonderful time learning in today's class. I urge you to do your quiz, the content page quiz, and the assignments. I'll see you in the next class. Thanks for watching. Bye.